All right, we're live. Sorry for the delay here, a little mix up with the schedule. Welcome to PTN Ice Daily Show for Friday, Fitness Athlete Friday. I am Alan, member of the Fitness Athlete Division, teaching with Mitch for the live course and also for the Essential Foundations online course. Cold day here uh, in Michigan, jumping on for uh, Mitch and Zach, giving them a little bit of a break. Sorry if you're tired of seeing my face here. I know we're a little bit late too. So what are we talking about today? Today we're gonna to talk about CrossFit versus the NSCA. So the National Strength and Conditioning Association, uh, they publish a couple journals. They have a certification that you've probably heard of, um, the CSCS, the Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist. So um, Zach went on here a couple weeks ago and talked about why or why not the CSCS. And he talked about it more from a practical perspective as far as not really learning to observe movement, coach movement, cue movement, guide movement. It's more of a, a textbook certification. That's why he doesn't usually recommend it. And uh, I'm gonna go from it from a business, legal, ethical perspective today. So a couple of things have come out in the past few weeks about the lawsuit versus CrossFit and the NSCA. You may or may not have heard about them, but we're gonna talk about them today. So it's, it's getting to be a big expensive court case um, and it looks like the NSCA is, is gonna lose probably for good, maybe as an organization as a whole. So let's rewind though and start at the beginning. So in 2013, there was an article published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, that's the, the main journal of the NSCA. And it was titled, CrossFit-based high-intensity power training improves maximal aerobic fitness uh, and body composition. It was a paper by a, a PhD candidate at Ohio State University and it was published in the November 2013 issue of JSCR. Um, it actually made, well, it made CrossFit look good and bad. They found that body composition and VO2 max improved with those athletes who did um, CrossFit versus other high intensity interval programs um, had about 54 people in the study, so kind of small study. Only 43 completed the study. And the paper concluded that 11 of 43 did not finish the study due to injury. And they concluded, uh, the paper concluded that there was a 16% injury rate with CrossFit. Um, and they had a quote at the end that CrossFit training displays emerging reports of increased rates of musculoskeletal and metabolic injury rates. So pretty big um, conclusion there, pretty damning of CrossFit. Despite the improvements in body comp and VO2 max, they, they said, you know, the injury rate is about 16%, which is very high compared compared to other sports like, like running or traditional weightlifting. And so looking at the breakdown of the paper, we want to look at the methodology. The methodology, um, not very sound. Um, <laughs> The, the participants were basically tested in a lab at OSU, Ohio State University, at the start and end of the study, and really no follow-up in the middle of the study. They weren't going to the CrossFit box each day to watch these athletes train. They, ha they really didn't had no idea what they were doing. They just said they were doing CrossFit. And it's kind of come out that the owner of, of the CrossFit affiliate that they were studying these athletes from said, hey, they, those researchers never came here. They never talked to my athletes. Um, that there weren't 11 people injured. He had a quote, I haven't injured 11 people since I started this affiliate, right? Let alone in the course of this 10 week study. So that on top of CrossFit following up and putting the pressure on NSCA um, took a couple years, but in 2015, they published a correction that said, hey, you know, looking at the methodology and the data again, we're willing to admit that only two of, of the 43 did not finish this study due to injury, and that puts us at about a 4% injury rate, which is much more comparable to pretty much every other sport and an activity that a human being can do, right? Running, weightlifting, uh, team sports all have an injury rate, you know, around 5% or less, so CrossFit is pretty comparable to pretty much any other physical activity that a human can do uh, injury risk-wise. But it didn't, it didn't stop there. CrossFit sued the NSCA, obviously, for falsification of, of data and, and publication kind of ethical issues. And NSCA sued back, um, citing libel and slander. And it's kind of gone back and forth in court since then um, with a couple developments over about the past 18 months. In, in May of 17, uh, the judge over the, the so the, the state cases in California, and then there's a federal court case as well, um, 
in May 2017, the judge sanctioned the NSEA um, due to finding that they withheld documents, right? So they committed perjury. They withheld documents during the discovery process of court. And I realize this is getting to be kind of uh, an introduction to, uh, to basic law, but during the discovery process, when you have to basically give all the documents related to the case, um, NSEA withheld documents in both state and federal court. The judge ordered them to conduct a forensic, a third party forensic analysis of their computers and servers and found that they did indeed withhold documentation. So they were cited with perjury in both state and federal court and ordered to pay back um, CrossFit's attorney fees and sort of preparation fees, which was about $410,000 and also to pay about $500,000 for the independent forensic analysis. So all of a sudden, a lot of money on the table for, for NSCA. Um, later that month, um, well, the next, next month, actually June, the judge made a statement. Um, he ruled in favor of CrossFit and said that the National Strength and Conditioning Association was found to have a commercial motivation for making the false statements in the study. Uh, with an intentional disparaging of CrossFit in order to drive consumers to the NSCA for their own CSCS certification, and that the loss in CrossFit certification revenue was the natural and probable result of false injury of the false injury data published. So pretty, pretty hard um, conclusion there from the judge. It's gone back and forth for another year or so with some more developments in the past couple months. June of 2018, <laughs> NSCA's liability. Uh, insurance carrier, the National Casualty Company, uh, actually cited those perjury charges as reason enough to not only drop NSCA but to <laughs> sue them. So now their own lawyers are suing them, um, saying they shouldn't be uh, held responsible to represent them and they shouldn't have to pay the charges that the judge ordered them to pay f to CrossFit. So they're no longer receiving the legal support that they were from their liability insurance. So it seems like things are not going very well for the NSCA. Um, furthermore, CrossFit is now suing on a different avenue, citing that there's evidence that the NSCA has received money from companies like Pepsi and Coke, and that it is causing sort of ethical issues with their publication of research, and that they want um, that investigated further. And um, if, if, you know, uh, if you know anything about Greg Glassman, you know that he's a pretty relentless guy, the CEO and founder of CrossFit. The, the man who started it all, he's, he's a pretty big proponent of population health, of kind of destroying big soda, big food, that sort of thing. And so he's, he's really kind of putting the pedal down on NSCA and other organizations too. Something that happened just this month is that CrossFit sued the National Institutes of Health and the CDC um, for Freedom of Information Act violations. Um, again, similar to NSCA, citing that they believe, that CrossFit believes that these organizations are withholding research data um, or otherwise not having the truest research agenda due to money they're receiving from these big food, these big soda companies like Pepsi and Coke for, for grant money. So that's that's kind of in a nutshell the the state of, of this whole lawsuit that started a long time ago, you know, five years ago, November 2013 to now. It seems like the NSCA is, is going to lose this. It seems to be very expensive. Um, I don't know much about the revenue. I used to have a CSCS myself and used to be much more involved in the NSCA. I don't know what their revenue is like, but certainly most organizations cannot withstand this amount of, of money and, and time and kind of bad press for long, right? That's kind of the, the downward spiral, death spiral of, of any company is getting drug out in court. Um, so from my point of view, my personal view, this is why I don't recommend the CSCS to anybody anymore. Not for, for any practical reasons like Zach has already talked about, which I totally agree with, but because it doesn't seem like NSCA might exist as an organization if it continues to go this way. So um, ne <laughs> never, you never want to buy into something that, that's not a sure thing, right? If, if you're not sure a company is going to be around for a few years, you don't want to buy their product. So when people ask me, Nowadays, should I get my CSCS? I say no, and I say because because of this this lawsuit stuff, um, it doesn't seem like they're going to be around very long, which is unfortunate. Um, certainly, this this was one paper, one research team um, from one university um, that kind of started this all, which is it's unfortunate that it went this far. Um, 
Yeah, I still read Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. I still cite that research. I'm certainly much <laughs> more um, scrutinizing of their methodology when I read their papers. Um, but, um, you know, it doesn't seem like this organization is going to exist for much longer if it continues to go this way, which is why I don't really recommend it anymore. Um, aside from practical reasons that, that it's kind of a, a textbook certification um, instead of a hands-on applied movement, which is something we advocate here in the fitness athlete division, actually watching movement, coaching movement, cueing movement, that sort of thing. So, so that's the state of this lawsuit. Um, if, if you weren't up to speed, hopefully you're up to speed now and you better understand um, what's, what's been going on in, in between CrossFit and the NSCA and, and you know, whether or not should you pursue your CSCS. I would say wait and see. Um, wait and see if NSCA can survive this storm. Um, it would be unfortunate if we lose that journal. That's a great journal. But at the same time, um, you, know, you make your bed and lie in it, I guess, as, as far as committing perjury and that sort of thing. So that's, that's the current state of, of CrossFit versus the NSCA. Um, happy to discuss this more. Um, you can comment here, uh, reach me on other social media, info at ice.physio. Uh, quiet weekend this weekend, just got uh, Eric out in pa Paoli, Pennsylvania, outside of Philly for extremity management. Fitness athlete, Essential Foundations, eight weeks online, last chance for this year to catch Mitch and I talking all things movement, heart rate variability, load management, adaptive athletes, working with kids, teens, older adults, all that good stuff. Last chance to catch us will be this Monday as, as the last cohort of the year kicks off. Still a couple seats left. I think we have three seats left, so grab those if you are interested. Um, busy couple weeks leading up to Thanksgiving. The weekend of November 3rd, Mitch will be in Nashville, Tennessee, teaching Fitness Athlete Live. Jeff will be in Santa Barbara, California, teaching Cervical Management. Jessica Davis will be up in Portland, Oregon, teaching Performing Artist Management. The weekend of the 10th and 11th, Veterans Day, Jeff will be up in Traverse City, Michigan, teaching Lumbar. If you're heading to that, I will see you there. Mitch and I are going to head up to that one since it's pretty close to home. And then if you are in the Milwaukee area, you can catch Jeff teaching Lumbar Spine the weekend of the 17th and 18th. Again, if you're heading to that, I will see you there as well. Going to drive up for that and help Jeff teach that one. So that's it for me. That's it from the Fitness Athlete Division. Hope you all have a wonderful Friday. Have a great weekend, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.